This Dalgona coffee is made possible thanks to the awesome people over at Clocked In. It's an app that everyone in the restaurant industry should have on their phone. This will allow you to fill on shifts on demand and who knows, maybe you'll end up working for me at some point in one of my pop-up Annie Bites food trucks. If you wanna see what Clocked In is all about, check out the links below for their app and for their Facebook page. You can tell them I sent you. Just no shokugekis, please. And after making that Dalgona coffee a couple of weeks ago, I really wanted to make my own boba with a little bit of Dalgona on top, but we also need to make chocolate boba because then we're gonna have a mocha Dalgona boba coffee, what? Now the first thing we need to make is the boba. So grab yourself a small saute pot and what we're gonna do is add in about 25 grams worth of granulated sugar, 25 grams worth of golden brown sugar, and 60 grams worth of water. We're gonna take this entire contraption and heat it over a low medium heat just to dissolve all the sugars together with the water. You don't really wanna overcook this too much. Once it comes up to a simmer, we're gonna turn this off and let it cool down pretty much to room temperature, if not a little bit more, so that way it's not too hot when we add in a little bit of this. This is 85 grams of tapioca starch and five grams of cocoa powder. Take about a tablespoon worth of that cocoa powder and tapioca starch blend and completely emulsify it into your liquid. The reason why we're doing this is because we're actually gonna turn this into our slurry of tapioca powder and cocoa powder. Once you have everything completely combined, we're gonna bring this back over a medium heat and start cooking this until it turns into this gummy, liquidy, tarry looking mess. It's going to look kind of like caramel, but you wanna make sure that all that tapioca is cooked and thickened up properly. Properly. That's basically what you want it to look like. Now that we have our gooey tarry mess, we're gonna cool this down before adding in the rest of our tapioca starch and our cocoa powder. Now we do wanna start bringing all of this together. It looks like it's not going to come together, but just trust me, what you're gonna do is actually mix together your little tar and your tapioca cocoa powder starch mixture. Now it's not gonna to come together completely in the pot, so what we're gonna do is dump this out on your favorite cutting board and start kneading this by hand. You wanna constantly bring the tapioca starch and the cocoa powder mixture back into the center and you're gonna completely start hydrating that slurry that we had earlier. You're gonna keep doing this until you get a nice, smooth, shiny-ish piece of, well, it looks, like, it looks like horse turd, not gonna lie, it looks like a horse poop, but it's gonna be nice and smooth and shiny. After this, you wanna let it rest for about 10 minutes with just a bit of plastic so it doesn't dry out, and then we'll handle this right after. After about the 10 minutes or so, go ahead and unwrap this bad boy and just pat it down just a little bit with just a touch of tapioca starch. You don't want too much, otherwise it will dry it out. From here, we're gonna cut this into four equal pieces so that way we can roll this out, and just look at the center of that. It almost looks like chocolate mochi ice cream. Once you have your four equal pieces, Go ahead and start rolling this out like you did with Play-Doh back in the day and make these really long snakes. You want to make sure to not put in too much pressure, otherwise you can start ripping it. But you should start to get these really nice snake shapes out of all of your tapioca starch. Take a touch more of your tapioca starch and just kind of rub all of your snake coils down just a little bit so that way when we go to cut them, not everything will start to stick. Cut these into small, maybe quarter inch pieces, and we're gonna actually have to roll every single one of these out by hand. Yes, unless you, I don't know, have some kind of a machine that makes your tapioca pearls for you, we're gonna be rolling these out by hand. So to do this, cut all of your shapes exactly the same if you can, put in a little bit of tapioca starch in your bowl, and take one piece at a time and start rubbing them in between your palms until you have an entire bowl of chocolate tapioca pearls. Now toss this into your tapioca starch just to make sure they don't stick together. Now make sure your water is boiling for this. For whatever reason, I turned mine off, but it was still warm enough to start the process. But you want to boil your boba for about 20 minutes once they start coming up to the surface. And it's super important that you do stir this from time to time so it doesn't stick to the bottom or to each other because that will happen. We're going to cook this until you see essentially a slurry form from the leftover tapioca starch. Once that happens, your tapioca pearls should be ready to let rest. So to do that, throw a lid on it, let them hang out for 10 minutes. Then we're going to take all of those tapioca pearls, put them through a strainer and run cold water over them. To be honest, the cold water that I had in that one little cup wasn't enough. So I took this to the sink and hit it with a bunch more water just to make sure all that extra starch was off of it. We're going to throw in some ice cubes into the water and let these cool down completely. 
Now while the boba is cooling down, we're going to be making some chocolate sauce. For this, we're going to need one half cup of sugar, one quarter cup of cocoa powder, and one half cup of water. Give this a quick stir. Now take this entire mixture over to the stove and we're going to beat the hell out of it while trying to cook it just over a medium heat. Once this comes up to a nice simmer, it will start thickening up on you, but you don't want to cook it too hard. Add in just a pinch of salt before we actually add in our boba. Now, this is an optional step. You probably don't have to do this, but I figured we have the boba, may as well make it extra chocolatey. This is in lieu of adding it to a brown sugar and water mixture. Instead, we're gonna be adding it straight to our chocolate sauce. And just like that, we have our chocolate boba finished in our chocolate sauce. And because we don't want this scalding hot, put this into a separate bowl and cool it down quite a bit before we get ready to use it later. It is time for redemption of this Dalgona coffee. For this, we're gonna use two tablespoons worth of granulated sugar, two tablespoons worth of really crappy instant coffee, and two tablespoons worth of lukewarm sink water. Give this a quick mix with your hand mixer or with a regular whisk instead. Honestly, it's up to you. I just figured I'd save myself some time by using this powered mixer. Scrape down the sides of the bowl to make sure all of your mixture goes back towards the middle and constantly whisk this and you'll see the color start to lighten up. As you get Dalgona coffee, everywhere it will start to get a little bit of body behind it but it's not quite enough so I grab my bigger whisk and hand whisk the crap out of this to get some more air incorporated into it yes the GoPro can't even keep up with those hand movements look at it it's like Naruto using as many signs as possible trying to whisk this coffee together to get that Dalgona it's seriously it's I was pretty impressed watching this footage but anyways this is the amount of air that you really want to whip into it because you want those stiff peaks on the Dalgona now scrape everything back to the middle, get yourself a nice pile of Dalgona coffee, and we are ready. Now as far as the Dalgona coffee goes, if you don't want the coffee, don't put it on there. Go ahead and add some like chocolate whipped cream on there, which now that I think about it sounds absolutely phenomenal and it, that, that should happen. Somebody do that please and let me know. Now no boba drink in Portland is complete without a mason jar. So grab your favorite mason jar and pile in some of your chocolate boba with that chocolate sauce. You can add as much as you want at this point. Once you have your layer of boba chocolate sauce, we're gonna add in about four or five ice cubes, maybe about halfway up your cup, and then fill it with your milk of choice. I'm using skim milk because, well, I'm probably gonna go work out after this. Just make sure it's topped off. Now for the Dalgona, I used about half of the amount we had made to top off our drink. And I will say it looks gorgeous, it's luscious, but we need the coup de gras of more chocolate sauce. And finally, our beautiful, reusable stainless steel boba straw that hopefully doesn't cause everything to spill out of it. And I think we're good. There it is guys, our very own chocolate boba with Dalgona coffee, giving it that mocha-y flavor. I just used regular milk for this. Feel free to use whatever alternative milks. I'm gonna be making one for the wife and taking it to her to work with a little bit of coconut milk. So do whatever you want. Oh my God, this. Oh, the coffee is creamy. The, the boba is still a little warm. So if you wanted to, you could wait overnight. Oh my God. The boba is chocolatey. Everything goes so well together. If you kind of kind of take all of this and press it straight into the drink. Oh, here we go. This is, this is the dream right here. This is it. This is the drink. All the other Dalgonas, y'all can stop. Chocolate boba with Dalgona style coffee. Come on. What's your favorite flavor of boba? Mine honestly is coffee boba or like coffee milk tea or anything like that with regular tapioca pearls, absolutely phenomenal. My name is Chef PK. I hope I taught you something today. Get subscribed and remember, seriously, keep playing with your food because this is what happens when you keep playing and 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 playing and